maintenance. And we'll probably have that many by January 15th again. It's been a really good seller's market, as you know. So everything's cycling. I don't know what, who does what, multifamily, single family, but I'm here to answer any questions you have. And Kaylee? Oh, okay. I so um, I guess uh, you guys can obviously ask any questions that you have, but so this is kind of like if you have anything you want to know about property management. Um, but for me, one of the big scary parts of it is going, okay, here's the assumptions based on like historical market rent that we've been able to get um, from a uh, underwriter's perspective on a deal. Here's what I think we can increase it to every year. Here's, you know, a not overly aggressive increase on rent. Here, you know, those are the things But then in reality, like you guys are already in that market and so you're able to help us with, okay, here's actually what we can increase it to and because we've done a market survey, here it is, you know, you've been able to help guide that process. Um, so for like a passive investor that's looking at a deal and you're looking at, you know, how, how aggressively somebody underwrites something, you know, how, how do you come up with figuring that out? Is it just market surveys or? Oh no, we do, we do loads. Of full, first off, we're full service management. We do due diligence. We do help with the buying, the selling, the managing throughout. Um, we take, I don't like this, but we take what you are given your P&Ls and kind of wad them up and throw them in trash and we go off at the actuals, <laughs> right? We walk the properties, we look at the leases, we do a lease file audit, we do a due diligence on the property, we want to know what's above, what's under, we run sewer lines to make sure that the sewer lines aren't cracked, we have professional roofers, foundation people, we have a whole group that comes in and it's a service that we offer, we'll charge, um, but if you use our management services, we'll pay the fee. So that's huge for people, especially when you're doing 500 doors. It's, it's saved a lot, a lot of money. And it saves a lot of money when you're doing 20 doors. I uh, had a question asked me a while ago, how many, what's the lowest amount of doors you'll do? In my entire career, I was always told, never turn away business because you little things can turn into anything. I have a lot of owners I work with today that I've worked with for 20 plus years that started off with a little 20 unit and now they have 1,200. Um, so I try not to turn away business. If it's something really small and it doesn't make sense, it's not close to something that we do, I'll reference you to someone else. I even let my girls do some side work sometimes. But we'll take care of you. That's our job. We make money when you make money. And it's hard on our side. We don't. You see what the management fee is, all of you. If you're doing your work, you're like, how do these people make it? Well, we work real hard and we help you buy more and more and more so we can take care of you and do it the right way. If we make you money, then we make money. Yeah. So on Kaylee's particular property, we walked through the door without doing anything. And I had a rent hundred dollars. Well, <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say that. No, close in big range. Um, but we walked in and, and raised around a hundred dollars before rehab. Now we're going to go higher, right? After rehab. So, but that's what we specialize in. Y'all come in looking at it and you're like, okay, like, well, these numbers. Go for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> these numbers say this. This is what I think. We're like, yeah, well, take the numbers over here. We love to be trendsetters. We're in a market that if you have it, charge for. You can charge for parking at the front door. Or you can charge for covered parking. You can charge for front door trash pick. If you have a small property and your maintenance man doesn't have a lot to do, he can pick up their trash at the front door three days a week. Throw in the dumpster, charge for it. You're in a market where you can make money on just about anything you do. But you have to be creative. Um, we're also in a market that's very, very big on amenities. So amenities are big for everybody, all the way down to getting their packages for them. So someone doesn't steal it off the front door. So with the amenities, you have to take the property into perspective and what kind of clientele you have and think, what am I going to put in here that's going to make me money? Not what am I going to put in here that's just going to look you. Yeah. And so often I have people buy property and say, hey, I want to go in here and I want to do this. We're going to put this in and put that in. I got to say, okay, wait, are you going to live here? <laughs> no. Then you probably don't <laughs> do that. So we start them over and show them all you have to do is be clean, safe, and functional, right? Four walls are four walls, reality. What makes the difference, it's not me, it's not my supervisors, it's the person we put in the office. They are the person that makes or break you. People lease from you if they like you, okay? End of story. If they 
like that person, they feel comfortable with them, they're going to lease from them. If they don't, they won't. So one of our biggest sayings, and this is going everywhere, is that always I'll be back. You know, nobody likes to, everybody likes to buy it and we like to be sold, right? So that, well, I'll be back. We're going to go look at another place. So our famous saying is, okay, we welcome you to do that. Just remember, we have one thing here you're not going to find out there. And they'll say, what's that? Me. <laughs> they do just what you did. <laughs> they laugh and then they go down the street and they walk in and this lady looks up. She's like, can I help you? Oh, I got Kathy down there. Okay, here. <laughs> so, and they do the same thing with specials. Oh, we just buy specials, but you have to adapt to your market sometimes, but we love to trend set. If people are doing $4.99 moving and we're not doing a special, they'll say, well, they're doing $4.99 moving and we'll say, yes, they are. And then their brain starts thinking, why are they doing that for me? Maybe they're not. <laughs> so it's kind of a reverse psychology, and it comes from years and years and years of training and sales. But I train my people just like I was trained. So we have classes, try to do them monthly, nothing shop quarterly, and train the people on how to convert traffic from the phone to the property, how to close the traffic that comes through the door, and I mean, if you come through our door, even if you're not qualified, you're probably closed. We'll tell you you're not qualified later. Our job is to get your money right then, right? So that's how they're trained. Conversions and closings. So when you're looking at multifamily, I'm just going to say to you, pick a team. Everything you do is built off of a relationship. Everything. This is a huge, small world that you're in right now. You will run across each other times 10. I promise you. I have through the years, it's it's hilarious. I'm considered a dinosaur actually. <laughs> but all of my brokers are all retiring and I'm like, okay, and one of them, his son's coming in and he's I'm like, oh really? <laughs> now you're really making me feel good. So then his other son come in, I'm like, okay, that's it. But I'll never stop working. Um, so in my service in this industry, I've had one property for twenty nine years. I've had three generations come through the door. And I'll, oh, Miss Kathy, you're still around. So that's just such a good feeling to know. I've been telling my kids about me and my child, you know, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's creating a sense of community. What you want to do, I tell my people, I'm not going to pay you to lease apartments. I don't want you to lease apartments. That sounds crazy, right? I don't want them to lease I want them to retain the people they have. The turnover kills you. So I bonus them on retention. We bonus them very nicely. We have a nice standard bonus, and then we increase that by whatever they increase their rent. So if they increase their rent by $25, we'll match that one time, right? But you get some little mamas in there that have kids to feed, and you can see your rent's going up $50 and $100 a buck because they want that $150, not $25. So, and they will make their market grow. So when I said we're trendsetters, I love to go into an area like we just went into, and I'll say it out loud, I can do that right, Oklahoma, that the average income is between thirty and sixty thousand dollars. The average rent is four to five hundred dollars a month. And you're like, what's wrong with the picture? So we walked in before we ever did any rehab, we raised the rents. Hundred or two hundred. Two hundred across the board. Before we ever did anything. And they just start shutting it out. But you raised them as they released the property, yes. or you did it as they, as they, as they renewed they and as we leased. So new lease. That was before the rehab. That was before the rehab. Once we rehab, we raised by four hundred dollars. Now that's a problem we see with a lot of projections. They use this model, right? The model says year one, we're going to do a five percent increase. Well, according to that model, that would mean that every single one of those units had to go up five percent on January first, and it's impossible. To totally do that impossible because there's units renewing every single month for the whole year. There are good point. Yeah, keep 18, that in mind when you're looking 18, at somebody's eighteen. Eighteen months is what I try to tell people. You want me to turn because you know you have twelve month leases. Eighteen months to get everybody turned yep. and to get their rents raised. That's just a good, reasonable time to make sure you get what you want. And there's going to be that exception to the rule. 
You're going to have Miss Jones that's lived here for 35 years, and she's on the budget. And she don't want to move, and y'all don't want to make her move, and she's on a fixed income, and nobody wants – but you have to be the same with everybody. Well, I think that, that's a good point because – So what do you do trying, with people like that? You help them find a place that's in their budget. It's business. That's, that's one of the biggest things people tend to forget, that this is a business. I've gone to every, every counseling, social media thing that you can go to with, with our industry. I can name a bunch of them, but I won't. But they teach you how to do your paperwork, how to close a property. They teach you. They've got phenomenal underwriting programs. Some of them do. But they stop at property management. I've heard so many times, oh, you just take some little old gal and you sit at home and you put her out there and let her get your rents and do this, do that. The reality is, You've got a $5 million asset. You're going to put a minimum wage person. It's a business. So you have to put an educated person out there to do the job. It's not just, it's, you don't just turn $5 million worth of assets over to somebody that's uneducated. Yes, ma'am. I have a question okay. on the website. Okay. And how important do you find website ads and social media ads? Because they're of, they're of the utmost importance right now. It's our life. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. yeah. It is our, it's our life. It's how we advertise. You know, in the good old days, God, I'm going to date myself. We used to run, put flyers on cars at Walmart and do this and hang stuff up in the laundry rooms and you'd hear all that. But yeah, no, it's all right there on the internet, on your phones. Not everybody has a computer, but everybody has a our software that we use, which has been really, I'm making it more and more created actually. It most of the software was on um, bookkeeping side, and they weren't user friendly on the property management side. To get accounting is a very high trade, right? Property management is completely different. You got to love people, and these people don't really love people. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, we came together with it. And we've now came to where we've, on a lot of properties, you don't even accept rent anymore. They pay online. They do their work orders online. They do everything online. And our software allows them to do that. But we still have somebody there where we create that sense of community. So we try to have an event every month. If it's breakfast at the gate or movie night or, you know, whatever it is, have an event. If you have a bunch of kids, Every Friday, do clean up around your building and come get obstacle or a bag of chips. Or, and boy, they will do it. And you give a building captain and, you know, everything goes up. <laughs> but they get to get their stuff, you know. They behave right. They get goodies. If they don't behave, they don't get goodies. And you can put a steel fence up and the kid can tear it down. So, yes, sir. Do you practice nuisance increases? Like, uh, say, the market is $1,000. Everybody in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Would you increase to a thousand activity over a year? I would. I would. And it's um, nuisance because it's a small increase, nobody's going to move over. Yeah, well, you think about it, and what you have to do is train your people that, look, for you, for them to move, it's going to cost them this much of their time, this much in moving company, this much in changing their utilities, this much in changing over cables and everything else. So this is... This is the amount it's going to cost you to move. I've only raised you this much. Why would you move? And then they're like, oh, the light bulb goes off. So, but I, the, the standard little, your lease is up, time to come in and renew, putting it out there 35 days. Because by law, if you're going to do a rent increase, you need a 35-day notice, right? We get out there 60, 90 days in advance and say, please contact the office at your earliest convenience. They come to the door. It was about your lease here. We're, we're here to rent it. I'm only going to raise you 50 bucks. And they're like, what? I'm just getting it 25. And <laughs> so they sign it. And they're walking out the door thinking, what did I just do? You know? Um, because we caught them off guard, right? And they love where they live. But if you put that little old better standard out there, that gives them, if you're on a 30-day notice, that gives them 35 days to think about moving. If you put the 60-day notice, which I like better, then you have 65 days. To think about moving. I don't want people to think about moving. We want to keep them there, right? 
And if the market is way below market, let's say the market is a thousand and they pay seven hundred, would you raise them uh, thousand or I don't know in the middle somewhere? That's that's where I just said you you might have somebody who's been there twenty years. You're supposed to do everybody the same, but each owner gets to choose what they want. It's up, it's up, uh, the door. It, yes and no. If they say, Kathy, I really don't want this woman to move, but she's got to come up in a rent. We'll, we'll raise the rent and we'll do it slowly until we get to market. You know, we, we call that six month leases. We don't like to do those, but we'll do those just so we can get people up to market. But the reality is, you want to charge everybody the same. Everything you want, everything you do, you want to do the same. Because of discrimination. It is. Fair housing. Fair housing is, and, and they're, they've been going as far as this pet thing. They've been, oh, yeah, you be in our shoes. So they've got people calling and shopping you and they say, I've got people, you said we don't take aggressive breeds. Well, it's my um, service, service dog. Your emotional support. Animal. Emotional yeah, support. We have to stop right there. Well, they got a hold of one of my managers who said, well, I'll have to call my supervisor because I know we don't take aggressive breeds. This was back when it first started, right? Well, they sued. And, well, don't think I don't fight back. I do. So we, we went back at them and said, you know, no, you're not. You were never told we weren't going to do this. You were told, let me talk to my supervisor. This is a um, way you are making money, and I'm not going to be the person to pay you. So came on, let's do it. They went away. So, Emotional support. Whoa. Sorry, we I didn't stop. Yeah. Like, I got a hold of one of my Oh, see, you can't ever put that on that. This is instant replay. We're trying to help people hear you. So your your company provides both the front front end services like the, the manager and all the back office services marketing everything the accounting services everything the only thing i do not do i do not use my broker's license to purchase you'll find your own broker i think it's a conflict of interest i do not use my brokerage license to sell i'm property management and that's what i am so i uh yes ma'am Oh gosh, really? <laughs> we're all say, we're all mean? over the state of Texas. Uh, really, I wouldn't turn anything down, but it has to make sense. Does that make does that make sense? Right now, we're currently all over the state of Texas. We have every big market that there is, and a lot of the small markets. Um, Oklahoma, we have Kansas, Arkansas, Louisiana, California, New York, Kentucky, Florida. I um, don't encourage a lot of buying on either coastline because it's not real tenant friendly. And in New York, it takes you six months to get somebody out if they don't buy. If and in California, it takes them shop three. So it's it's pretty hard. It's it's a rough market. You're in it. <laughs> You're setting it. <laughs> You're it's, landlord friendly is text. Yes, sir. You know, I'm going to tell Shame on them. Shame on them is what I'm going to tell you because, oh, Lord, this is where I don't have a filter and I told you can't record me. It's, it's, it's your asset, okay? Did I say that right? It's your asset. That's right. So the more eyes, the better. Yeah. Everything that we do is 100% transparent. And why shouldn't it be? So if there's somebody telling you not to be involved, and they don't want you doing this, and they want you doing that, something's wrong. The only thing that I'll tell you, and I'm very blunt about it, don't guide my people. They can't have too many bosses. There can only be so many chiefs, so many Indians. You're welcome to walk up on the property any day of the week. No, it's yours. You can visit anytime you want. Your, your program, your software is there for you to look at every day. Your bank account's there for you to look at every day. You know every work order that comes in. If you're smart, you can put cameras on your property, which I love. You can just turn your phone on and look at everything that's going on every day. So the more involved you are, the better. Don't, don't guide the personnel. That's all. Don't guide the 
personnel say, hey, what's up? Something needs to be done before the book is available. Just go to the rule supervisor. That's exactly right. Write it down. If you see something that you have, just write it down. Contact one of the regionals. They'll make sure it, it's taken care of for you. Do, We're, do you have like weekly calls with your If they manager? want. What normally starts off with my new owners will do weekly calls. And then you'll find it'll be a monthly call. And then you'll find it'll be a quarterly call. And then you'll find once a year you'll say, Oh, happy holidays. <laughs> yeah, I can like FaceTime with you guys. And yeah. then I go out every week. So yeah. and then it's, it's whatever you want. Well, unless there's something and, wrong, and if I can be there, I'm there. If not, the girls are always there. Yeah. So um, I have three. I have first one in Hearst, which is where the corporate office is um, here in Hearst, Texas. We have one in East Texas, in Nacogdoches. We have one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you have a choice of doing internal upgrade, let's say changing out the cabin door versus putting an external fan from fan to the down, what would you do? What, what Let me see if I can repeat that back to you so I know if I've got it right. If I had the opportunity to change the whole cabinet versus changing out just the door front, uh, just the door front. what so would I do? It's going to depend on the actual fixture itself. Uh -huh. If it's in good shape, if it's not broke, don't fix it. If, if you can reface them, some of them can turn out phenomenal. If you can't, if they've had years and years worth of hinges and and it's just not going to look right, I'm going to tell you, just change it out. We get such a low price right now for cabinets and stuff. It's almost worth it just to yank them out. So oh, compared that you're putting up outside of the ground floor unit, what's more work you doing in terms of raising ground? They'll say when mom is happy, everybody's happy. That's really not true. Mm -hmm. When the kids are happy, everybody's happy. Mama's happy, right? But but really, where do you spend most of your time? In the kitchen or in a bathroom? Reality. So I would I would put more money into the kitchen than I would outside. Not to say that people don't want outside yards. It depends on the property itself. The, like I said it depends on if you're an A, B, C, D, E, and F. We handle it all. But you look at the property and say, what is the need? For this community, you know, we're very big pet friendly uh, going on right now. So, honey <laughs> ground versus a dog park. Depends on how many children versus how many animals. Both. Yeah. Both. We do both. What is your primary uh, class of properties that you guys are managing? I just went through it. A, B, C, D, E, and A. I'm just kidding. I just took this one project on that I was like, oh, no, we're not. And we are, and it is going to be just Beautiful. phenomenal when we finish. And it probably should have been bulldozed. <laughs> yeah. Where is that one at? In Dallas. Yeah. And I did the same thing on one in Dallas. We got it for 9000 a door. should have been bulldozed. We sold it for 76 a door or oh six, seven a door or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, yes. You guys handle the crazy. Yes. Well, here's kind of what we do. We will get you bids. We have contractors we've worked with for years, several of them, not any one. We will blindly, you, you give, we give a scope of work, right? This is what we want. You want people to bid apples for apples. If you just go say, hey, bid me and blah, blah, well, you're going to get bids back that are here and here. So give them a sheet that says this is what I want done. Hand it out to three vendors. Let them go out and give you an honest bid. We shoot it over to y'all. Y'all pick them blindly. If I have something to say about it, I will. I'm not shy. I'll say, ah, that guy was walking so slow when he came through here. You're never going to get these units done, right? So I'll comment about it. I won't push it to any one vendor. That's kind of your choice. Yeah, and I came on board with the pre, pre your own Yeah, business. we're working on that. Like, like I had someone that my mentor gave me, you know, to do you know, great stuff. And they, they look good, but then from the actual watching it be done and being there physically, so now they're helping me to get different bids and to, you know, we did it for a couple of them. Now we got to tweak a few things because they weren't, you know, our, our, our regional, not regional, your regional, but our local girl, you know, she's very meticulous. Thank gosh she kind of does some QC for me. And she's like, hey, like, look at the counters here. Look at this wasn't done right here. And, 
and so now we're going to go and go get new bids and yeah it, it really is all about the person on site yeah I, mean, I can sit up here and talk all day long but it i have knowledge i have knowledge to share but it's truly who we put on those properties and we try to match the person to the property and i always tell everybody if you're going to take it to a if it's a if it's a solid c put a b person in there if it's a b put an a person in there you want a person a little bit above the class of clientele you have and then you get the respect you get the clientele you want yeah. if that makes any sense to you yes sir how do you approach smaller properties and say 30 users slowly i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> In in what aspect? In, in, uh, management, I mean, uh, you cannot you cannot have full time people obviously there. You can't. So there's there's a few ways of doing it. You can put uh, we're we're actually there's a new system coming out where you can put this deal in the wall and it's like a computer and you go up there and you push a deal and one of the girls' faces comes up and says, "Hey, how are you?" And they're like, "Hey, um, I want to look at an apartment." They say, "Okay, the code do this," and you can change the code constantly, and they can go view a unit on their own. We're still into service industry because it's gone yep. and it's needed to come back because that's what it's all. I said everything's built on relationship, right? People like to talk to people. Like if you take me gambling, I'm going to be at the crap table because they're going to look at me if they're going to take my money. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm not going to be over there loading the slot machine. But <laughs> the, the service industry, it's gone. People just don't realize how important it is to. I get more calls at my office that say, "Wow, people answer the phone there." I'm like, "Yes, we do." Um, but I haven't lost that, and I don't think anybody needs to lose it. So, on a 30 unit, we just had a 20 unit. You get a part-time person. Depends on where your occupants. If it's full, you have the number to call. It's on the door. We start the waiting list. If it needs somebody over there, we'll take somebody from corporate. Throw them over there. Do whatever they need to do but they normally will take the calls and go show and then maintenance is on call we make sure that somebody's there to pick up the property at least twice a week so you have like two hours of maintenance and then but, you give that uh, personnel time two. Only. yes so in that case there's no uh, payroll uh, or that payroll varies uh, the payroll would vary you would have payroll if somebody's going to go over there and pick up your ground you can pay for them if they're going to go over and leave your unit, you're going to pay for them. Um, but it's just for their time. I don't upcharge. And that's where, you know, a lot of people, they'll, oh, we're going to do this, 50%, and do. we don't do that. We charge exactly what their pay is, and that's that. So then you just charge like 5% whatever that uh, may be uh, in addition to that. I'm on 30 units. That was dreaming, but we do charge <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> It, it on 30 units you're looking at 10 percent and if you like one of my clients just bought a 30 unit property right he said i'm looking at another 160. will you put something in the contract that says it's a 30 day out and that if i get to that 160 that knock the percentage down and i said if you read the contract it has a 30 day out for both of us it does i don't like contracts so it's just a necessary evil right so it says if you're not satisfied with me give me 30 and don't shake my hand but I get the same with you I want to work for people who want to be successful and it, it makes it work both ways right so it's 30 day out automatically either way and I lost train of what we were talking about <laughs> with that 10 percent oh the percentage yeah. if if you get more units we go down in the percentage right. you know it and it depends on where it sets too if you're sitting right next door to something that I have it's not going to be a hassle for anybody. We talk about percentage. I'm not locked in, but if it's way out here by itself, yeah, we, that, we get free. Yeah. In addition uh, to whatever labor charges, like yes, okay. yes, but we will increase your rent and pay for ourselves. I promise you. We do very good at that. She had her hand up first, so I forgot the name. Question. I'm sorry. <laughs> your your turn. Don't remember it soon. I promise. Yeah, I will. Uh, uh, question I have is what are some questions that when you're interviewing a property management company you should be asked oh golly that you know everything you are asking right now okay. number one number one thing I say is you know can often do I come to my property do I need to make an appointment to come to my property how accessible am I to my to my 
design, software, you know, all everything we're talking about right now is questions you should ask. And what do they think is most important? Do you, do you think it's important for an owner to be on the property? I do. The more eyes, the better. We're all human, right? We make mistakes all day long. Y'all do too, believe it or not. Go so get it. Yeah. Okay. I would, my question was in regard to gender payments. So okay. when you have a different property, like a property manager, say you have a property out in, I don't know, Texarkana. How okay. Awesome. And okay. Do you have them send the invoices to your central corporate office to be paid or are they paid at the property? What happens is the property manager's input to the software, and then I do uh, what we call check runs twice a month. And the bills are paid twice a month. I look at them. They look at them. We have like three sets of eyes. You have your bookkeeper look at them before they give them to me. The supervisors look at them and make sure it's legit. We try to keep eye on the water bills, the electric bills. Like if you've got a bag of electric that's over $15, okay, who left the lights on? You want to pay it? You know. That I understand, but I'm talking more like when you're involved in the renovation process, like those types of vendors when you're on the unit. Same way. They they go out and they do their job, and then when the supervisor goes out and walks their job, when they say, oh, we're, we're through with the unit, or I'm through the, the exterior paint, they go and do what's called a punch list. They walk the property, they look and say, nope, you missed that, you missed that, and they start taping it. They'll shoot it back through. When they say it's done, we pay them all but 10%. We do a 10% holdback. But usually it's a third, a third, and a third shot 10%. <laughs> that way we keep everybody doing their job. Yes, sir. So you have national contracts with flooring, carpeting, yes. paint companies and such, so you get best pricing? Yes. Yes, sir. I arrived late, but I may have missed the uh, answer. Do you manage outside of Texas other than Oklahoma? I heard Absolutely. you mentioned so uh -huh. pretty much. All over. all over. It has to make sense. Right. Like I said, um, I got a call today from one of my owners that said, oh, is it Illinois? Ohio. Ohio? We do this deal in Ohio. I said, is it 200 plus units? It has to make sense, right? I said, okay, I'll get right back. Okay. So it has to make sense. Um, if to do 30 units, Ohio, can I do it? I mean, I could, but that would be an awful lot. I wouldn't make about 50 years in Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> we just got back from Alabama looking at this property. So um, it's it's pretty similar. I can help you. I can refer you. I can help you interview your management. Um, I do consulting as well. So you all know that. So it's not all about me. I'm not here to talk, just sell myself today. I, I do not advertise. Kaylee said, bring some stuff. And I'm thinking, yeah, all of our stuff is referrals, so we don't have stuff. We yeah, pulled out these 20 year pamphlets. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I'm kidding. So, all my work is done on referrals. I can help you. I don't mind at all. Helping you find the right person, helping you look over and tell you where you. Nine times out of 10, this is the biggest thing that people never get when they take a management company. I'll give you a percentage, and I tell you, this is what you're paying. That's what you're paying. I'm not going to say, oh, and this goes back to you because I know you're thinking 10 percent is crazy. But any other company comes in any lower, they're going to say, oh, yeah, 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 I'll do it at 5 percent. But then they're going to charge you for back office bookkeeping. They're going to charge you for every piece of paper they use, every stamp they put on that envelope, the envelopes, anything that's super, I mean, everything they can think of. And when you look at it at the end of the day, and I've showed it to a hundred people in my career plus. They're making 15% off of you. Yeah, Even on a 200 that. unit deal. When I was switching apartment managers. He's like, be careful because then they'll charge for yes. is it all inclusive. Can you do, you know, do they do accounting? Do they have marketing? Do they do you know, all the things? That's, that's one of the. Like, yes, 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 yes. Sometimes I'm like, do I, am I doing something wrong? Being so honest is good, but you know, I'm not because it comes back to me every day. So. When you, sorry, go ahead. When you switch, um, when you have you ever had a situation where you keep a building and the owners change? I, 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 I have kept a building through four owners. Okay, so <laughs> how do you handle that accounting, closing the books for one? And well, it's separate entities. You close the books whenever you sell, and then you start a whole new account for the person buying. 
Well, that's what you would think, but I've seen. Oh no, no. Even in mid month. No, no, no. Mid month as well. Mid month. On the eleventh of the month. If that's what you, we we close out on the end of the month. But if you need to close out, if that's. I'm just saying, if if the transition took place like on the eleventh of the month. That's it. It's great if it ends at the end of the month and the new owner. But they don't. But that doesn't happen very often. They they close when the financing closes. That's exactly right. And everybody's going to come to you and say, "Oh, we're closing on the sixth. and we start laughing, and we're like, "Okay." <laughs> and the seventh and the eighth rolls around, the ninth gets there, and we're like, we're all right. It's all good. And then when we close, we just go do our deal. You also mentioned you do due diligence work. Yes. So you'll walk the whole property, every apartment unit, every every, every single room, unit. We uh, take price, down approximately for something like between thirty three and fifty dollars a door. Thirty three and fifty dollars a door. Mm -hmm. But that includes. Your roofers, your foundation people, your uh, pesticides, he'll draw everything up for you. Um, the plumber that runs the cameras down the line shows you if you have any dips or breaks or whatever. It's a full service package, so it's a pretty good price. And we wait it if we manage it. Oh, you'll include that in part of the management fee? We will totally waive that fee if we manage the property. Mm. That's a good deal. Y'all are going <laughs> anywhere because I didn't have you from the beginning. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 You know, the reality is, is if you have 50 units, you need somebody sitting on it. You just do because that's 50 families. And if you just put three people in there, that's 150 people. And that's so 50 units you need somebody on. Sometimes 40 units you need somebody on. It depends on the class of property, depends on the location. I mean, if it's all seniors, yeah, you don't need to tell. Talk to your office, God love them, they don't have nobody. But if if it's, you know, families, you need somebody there to, our managers are not just property managers, they're base setters, they're psychiatrists, psychologists, uh, you name it, they find advisors, they do a lot. Their role, if I put it down on paper, you need to go, wow. And that's what our property managers are. Yes, so what is budget, what is budget yeah. How do I budget payroll? Yeah. Uh, well, I first look at the asset and I do the due diligence, and then I have to go back to the budget to payroll. It so depends. Is it, is it per, per unit, like thousand dollars per unit. Do not unit. do it by the door at all. Um, I have found that if you do that, you can sometimes pay a lot more than you needed to. Or is it based on personnel? Like, if you need two people and uh, one, I don't know, supposed to make 40000 and another one supposed to make fifty five, then you just, that's your payroll, basically. It depends on the asset itself. So it's really hard to say. If you have individual HVAC and you need a certified guy, you're not going to find one out there right now for less than $21 an hour. Not that's worth it anyway. So you base it on the property. And a lot of guys don't want to work the small properties because that means they have to do all the work. <laughs> so it, it really, it's, a, it's hard to answer that question. And on a smaller property, I would take a really good leasing agent or a, or a really good assistant and give them the bump up and give them that manager title and then train them. I love to train my own people. Yeah, you and guys did a good job. Robert, so you put a manager in the office and on call me. Say that one more time. So, if it's a 50 unit property, yes, sir, you would put a manager, well, a leasing agent or a manager in the office, yes, and uh, on call part time uh, maintenance. Sometimes it needs full time, it depends on the property. Again, mm -hmm. if you have a property that's full of children, and, and it just depends on locate, it depends on so many things. We, we have a property right now, I told you that was an F that we picked up. It, <laughs> it <is. laughs> like F, right. <laughs> Yeah. It's an F and a, and a, and a, and a it's going to be, it's going to be amazing when we finish, but it needs somebody there every single day picking up the grounds because the clientele that's there now, their culture is throw it down. How many units? 24. 24. 24. Mm -hmm. So every day you have to pick up grounds. People and more than one person, right? 
No, they're they're doing a total rehab, so the oh, whole okay. thing is getting gutted. So, so but the clientele right. that's there now, just yeah, every day. But if you do full rehab like that, then you kick everybody off. Right? We are. No, no we are. Reason. But so you got to be smart easy. about it. You you don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face, so they need some income. So we're rehabbing half the property first, mm -hmm. and they know that once this is ready to go. They have to go or we won't get the clientele we want. So we're making these units ready. So when we're ready to go, we're pre-leasing them and then knocking it out and then everybody else is out. So we still have income coming is in. On the, is on the turnover. So you go into a new property, and I, I don't care if it's 100 units or 300 units, and you've got four tenants, bad tenants, not four, but I mean bad tenants. They don't pay on time. You know, you know we've got all kinds of problems and stuff like that. What is kind of like the turnover time to, to get through that? You know, it's like because I've run into two buyers that I know and they both had problems because it took them so much longer to convert the uh, tenants, you know, change them out from the less desirable tenants to the better. Well, you're not going to get if, if you have a, a property that's half full of less desirables, how are you going to get that desirable person through the door? So it is a problem. So it's a hard thing to do. So what we try to do, because you don't want to make someone go broke, um, we kind of put the word out there, new sheriff in town thing, you know. Guess what? You're not going to pay your rent late anymore. If you, if you do, you're going to get kicked out. Well, you'll find that the, and I don't have a filter. <laughs> you'll find that the loudest mouth person and the one that serves up most of the stuff is going to be the one in your office every day. So you tell that one, you're getting evicted. You're out of here. We're not dealing with it no more. Because that's going to be the one that's usually the latest on their rent. They want to be there every day, so they're buddies with you. Well, we don't do the buddy system. We do the business system. So when you start with that one, then everybody else is like, oh, my. We either better pay our rent on time or we're gone. 50% of them will clean it up. The rest of them you try to weed out and bring one in as you kick one out. But if it's totally undesirable, like we took a property over about seven months ago, and it fooled me. I've been doing this for 35 plus years. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I walked the property, I did everything. It's, it was already under a management company. They were just changing management companies, right? He said, can you do this? And I said, yeah, I can. We get in the door, come to find out. I, first thing we do is go meet the manager. We go meet the mayor. We go meet the chief of police. We go meet everybody and say, this is who we are. This is what our goal is. We want straighten this property up, but we can't do it without your assistance, right? So they're like, thank God. We've been trying to do this forever. Couldn't get it done. I said, well, we're going to get it done, but we need your help. So when I call, I'm going to need you there, right? And usually, on a property like this, we're packing. Reality. Um, so you, you have to. And so again, you go to the biggest, baddest one, will come to find out this property. I mean, too much. Um, one of the one of the least, one of the units that were leased was a guy that didn't live there. He owns a ranch down in South Texas. I'm just gonna leave it like that. And he was the drug lord. And so what he did is he paid like five or six, 13 to 16 year olds, bought them cell phones, had cash in their pocket all the time. And all they had to do is stand on different parts of the corner and say, "Police coming in, tow truck coming in." This happened and that's happening. So it's like, okay. Even a little lady in a wheelchair. He bought her, her groceries. He gave her money to go to the bingo hall. She had told tow trucks come. And the whole place was a setup. So we were like, oh my gosh. We unraveled it real, real quick and did something that the police hadn't been able to do in how many years? And they said, how did you get it? I said, you talk. God gave you two ears and one mouth. You listen a lot. They rat themselves out. They really do. And so we just started kicking out the bad. And said, made a statement, a huge one. And then the rest of them like, said, look, this is not the place. I can't say what I was going to say. But we do not deal ass, grass, anything else. This is where you lay your head and sleep. And if you're going to do it, take it down the road. We're not going to deal with it. This is a different environment now. And it took us probably two months of beating it in their head before they're finally, 
these people ain't kidding. I mean, they told us we was going to be found behind the dumpsters. Yeah. Y'all yeah. going to find yourself dead behind a dumpster. I said, whoo, they better not bring an eye to a gun fight. <laughs> you know, you just have to show no fear, right? But there's areas that people don't care. So do I care to be in those areas? Not really. Did I do this as a favor to somebody? Yes. Are we good at it? Yes. Did you charge more than ten percent? You darn right. I charge more than one. <laughs> we're gonna put it out there. We're gonna put it out there. But and it comes with a lot of other, right? So it's not, it's not a two month process. It's twelve, eighteen months to really get through the whole cycle. I say eighteen months, just like I said. Eighteen months. If you want to cycle through and get it where it wants to be, now we're probably six or seven months in. Seven months in, we have one eviction left. Never been Everybody, we have kids playing in our beautiful new playground. Never happened since the day we walked in the door. Everybody's like, oh my gosh. So, yeah, one eviction left. Everybody else got the message. Yes, what do you have for evictions? Um, depends if... What kind of rules do you have? Rent is due on the first, late on the Rent's second. due on the first. It's late on the fourth. I think they have us on fifth now. It's it, they, the laws have changed just here recently. So it was it was the third. They've now changed it to the fifth. We used to charge mega late charges. They changed it on the two. We're only allowed to charge charge a certain amount, but we charge that whole amount first day. Because if that's all we can charge anyway, might as well get it right. You have to give a three day notice on on the sixth. So it's six What's and eight. The eighth? It'll be the ninth. It'll be the ninth now. This all these laws just went into effect mm -hmm. last month. Um, so we now it'd be the ninth. You file. Court was I mean you could set your clock that it was ten days from day file for years. It's not like that anymore. We've grown so much <laughs> that um, <laughs> it's sometimes fifteen, eighteen days out. But it's nothing like anywhere else. It's still pretty tenant friendly. I mean or landlord friendly, you walk in and and you can have a person sitting there saying, "But you're, did you pay your rent?" <laughs> no, case over. But there's two judges around the area that are just the opposite. So you have to do what they want you to do and do it just by their book, or they'll throw it out of time. So it just depends on the property, the location, and the judge. When we had all the flooding. We had courthouses shut everywhere. We had cases that went out for, oh my gosh, 90 days. Yes, ma'am. What is like the weirdest thing that's ever happened? In your you cannot life? ask me that. <laughs> not allowed to say that on video. <laughs> <laughs> we, we deal with people yeah. all day long, every day. You can imagine it. We probably dealt. With. So. Some of the things that you can imagine, we probably dealt with. So I really couldn't see it on video, but um, it wasn't a paper. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, we we you know you guys have to realize we deal with natural deaths, homicides, suicides, um, child protective services all the time, children being locked out, being left at home alone. So just some of the craziest stuff that you can ever imagine we deal with them. so our managers are really put through the ringer and my biggest deal is if somebody calls and says hey I haven't heard from so-and-so in a while will you go check on them no call the police because you never get the picture out of your head wow. been through it too many times so let the police do their job that's what they're paid to do and then you don't have to deal with it but we have walked in on anything that you could imagine <laughs> I had, I had a tenant who had personal porn pictures on their wall. We've had worse than that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have some that like to open the door with no clothes on. Yeah. <laughs> and even walk outside with no clothes on. I was like, please go get your clothes on. <laughs> we had one, one property we really called it Medicine Park because you'd go, Did you take your meds today? Have you taken your meds today? Yes, sir. Those new eviction rules, is that on the ground? Throughout the state of Texas. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And we use uh, on some properties, we've just TAA, so we we, we, TAA leases all the way, and I would advise everybody here: if you think you want to create your own lease and go out there and cover your own stuff, think again. TAA works hard 
to fight for us and to fight the laws and, and to keep us right and keep everything right. I know the biggest thing I ever fought, um, well, I had two big ones. When we city of, uh, back when McDougal came in and he was going to redo all of the old town Irving, and I had three properties over there, and they were going to get rid of all the slumlords, is what they called it. Well, we weren't slumlords. We were just Class C, nice Class C properties. So they came in and said, you, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that, and they changed all the rules on us on what we had to do. Well, I first got a little upset by it, and then I thought, well, why am I getting upset? It's just keeping my property up. Let's do it. So we went and did it. Then they went in and said, um, well, the enforced, code enforcement came in and said, he wasn't going to allow me to research his countertops. I'm not playing. And I said, show me that in your code book. <laughs> and I'll do that. But if you don't show me in your code book, he said, it's not in code book, it's in my book. And I said, well, the day I start tending the yearbooks, the day I'm out of business. So we ended up fighting with the city. Um, very, very hard. They hired somebody from our side to try to help them who really didn't help them. Uh, McDougal ran off with all the money. That's in the paper. You can read all that. Uh, they tore down a bunch of properties. A lot of them needed it. Some of them didn't. None of mine got torn down. They wanted me to use my properties as the, you know, oh, let's show them how it's done. I said, no, not interested in doing that for you. You know, y'all came in here hard. You was strong. You were being rough and mean and did our job. We'll see you every year. So that's what we do. We see them every year. I, I wasn't interested in helping them, but that was probably, without TAA, none of us would have won that battle. And I'm telling you, when they went to the courts and we went into the city, I never seen more black suits in my life from TAA. It's, we're at, NAA got involved. It was TAA, NAA. Uh, just everybody came in, and they won the suits for us that they were trying to get us to do. Um, the other one was in Grapevine. We had actually a really nice property but they put in new housing addition and they wanted, they showed that the calls for service on that street were higher than anywhere else in the city. It's because there was two speed traps. The police pulled everybody over, given tickets for speeding. The speed limit was 30 miles an hour. I can't drive 30 miles an hour, <laughs> but I learned how to drive 30 miles an hour on the street. Anyway, they wanted to close all the apartments down, and the city was looking at doing it. So we went in, and I told the person with me, just sit back, don't say nothing, I was just listening. We weren't in there five minutes. No, 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 uh -uh, no. <laughs> so I said, the reality is, we've been here for, well, at that time, I was there for maybe 27 years on that particular property. I said, we've been here 27 years. You chose us as your neighbor. We didn't choose you, but we accepted you. Now, if you look at your calls for service, you'll see that they're tickets. They're not anything from our property. I said, let me tell you, I can control my neighborhood. I get to run credit and criminal. I know who lives on my property. Do you know who your neighbor is? Can you control that? So my whole deal, it ended up the apartment association, I was plastered all, and get Kathy to do it. But even the mayor, will you please come to any of it? I said, no, I will not. <laughs> but it, it's things like that that the apartment association helps you with. And the laws too. It's a pain to pay that little bill, but it saved you a lot. Being a part of TAA. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. what yes. I asked. That's actually the guy I bought that one from um, Lantana. Oh. He was like, get get to be a part of that association. You guys are work. like, we already are. are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Every property I do, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be TAA. We we're going to use the systems that work. So. That well, so that was that was my timer. Yay! Uh, right. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Job. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. So um, I just wanted to say thank you. Uh, we have another 30 minutes or so of networking. If you guys want to chat and talk, if you have any more questions, if you guys want to stay and be here, they're they're over here. You know, of course, Class A will be here to answer your questions. Um, we've got um, the lovely space that we've worked in or used today. Uh, that's Mark's space. He lets us use, and so Mark's gonna come up and say something for a minute while this reconnects. And uh, go ahead. Okay. You don't don't put your juju on me. <laughs> 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 I walked you up. Yeah. So um, 
So I'm, my name is Mark. I'm with Covarica Insurance. Thank you guys for coming out here. Uh, this is our building. So, you know, make sure if you guys would pick up as you leave, that'd be great. Um, we are an insurance agency. We do commercial lines, personal lines, all that good stuff. One of the things we do specialize in, uh, me in particular, is apartments and property. So we do specialize, whether it be a wind hill buy down, uh, insuring your property, make sure that you're taken care of and whatnot. Um, as well as the differences, we do consult on your policies that you guys are going into. If you have an agent you absolutely love, you can pay me to make sure he's doing his job right. Happy to do it. Um, or we can just look at taking the business. One of the big things is who